Sea of Thieves has gone through some changes, and nothing more so exemplifies that as the map. We've had a glimpse of the game since 2015, but we don't really have an understanding of how the map has changed over time until after E3 2016, but luckily we have plenty of alpha footage available. So now let's get on to every map change in Sea of Thieves from 2016 to 2023. Starting off, let's look at how the map evolved from pre-release to the launch of the game. In the Inside Stories, a series of developer videos, we can see a small version of the map we had at launch. This version has a myriad of changes and we get a glimpse in one of these videos. There are several differences in this map. Firstly, Cannon Cove is in a completely different part of the map. The first biome is more reminiscent of the Ancient Isles and Cannon Cove is located in the Shores of Plenty, towards the west of the map. Old Salt Atoll was a completely different island, this was called Cutlass Key on launch. Falls Lagoon and Lookout Point remain the same, just in different locations. And Wellspring Island and Keelhaw Isle were transformed into forts and moved to the Shores of Plenty. Footage exists of Wellspring Island too, before it got its makeover. Devil's Ridge was also in a different place, where we can see the familiar outline of Cannon Cove in this footage here. In 2017, we can see an expanded version of the map and a sneak peek at the Shores of Plenty. However, Wellspring Island and Sailor's Knot make an appearance as non-forts, and they're situated between Sanctuary and Golden Sands Outpost. In the main game, Sailor's Knot was moved south of Golden Sands, and Wellspring was moved east of Sanctuary Outpost. And that about covers the changes from before launch, so let's get into the post-launch stuff. Sea of Thieves, as a live service game, saw some world changes immediately with its first update, The Hungering Deep. This added the NPC Merrick, who was the quest giver for The Hungering Deep in his own little campsite. The camp was there prior, however. Shortly after the conclusion of the campaign, a portrait of him and his son Derek were placed there. Derek is based on a player character who made their pirate look like Merrick. Two weeks after this, Rare launched their first build rat adventure. These were smaller updates intended to bridge the gap between larger updates. The first one was Skeleton Thrones, launching on the 13th of June 2018. This added 10 skeleton thrones for players to sit on around the map. We wouldn't see any changes until the 31st of July 2018 with the release of the second major update, Cursed Sails. This had two main changes. Firstly, Wanda the Weaponsmith for Golden Sands Outpost went missing, but even more interesting was a new cave appearing on Wanderer's Refuge, a large island southeast of Golden Sands. In this cave, you could find a little warning telling you not to enter, and further in, a workshop. This features a cannon base, a bed, a workbench, and some clues to Wanda's whereabouts. You could also see an inaccessible area at the back. The outposts had these warning totems placed by hostile skeletons, and the NPCs cowered around them selling their goods at a reduced price. They would be updated each week over the three-week event. 2018 saw the biggest expansion to the map when Forsaken Shores, the third major update, arrived on the 27th of September 2018. This added an entire new region to the game called the Devil's Roar and was touted as a more challenging area for crews to explore. 17 islands were added in total, consisting of one outpost, two sea posts and 14 uninhabited islands. A bunch of other features were added to make use of the new region, but in terms of map changes, the new region was subject to new hazards. These hazards included volcanoes, which spewed molten rock capable of destroying ships and harming players. The volcanoes would cause the water around the islands to boil too, inflicting damage over time. Moreover, geysers shot up from the ground, launching players and killing skeletons. Earthquakes threw players off balance and caused ships to move around if they were not anchored. Even further, the update brought a new voyage, Cargo Runs. This had the effect of introducing sea posts to the old region's tune, each receiving two like the Devil's Roar. The uninhabited islands saw new NPCs populate them, as starting and end points for the Cargo Runs. This applied to only some of the larger islands though. A mysterious NPC, Stitcher Jim, was found looking into the Devil's Roar on Lyre's backbone. To this day, this remains the biggest single map expansion to date, but there's still plenty more to come. On the 30th of October 2018, the Festival of the Damned dropped, and it added some small changes. These were beacons dotted around the map, which could be lit with player lanterns and the new coloured flames. November 27th marked the final update of the year, the fourth major content update and fan favourite, Shrouded Spoils. Although light on map changes, it still evolved the map. The first world event, the Skull Fort, was only available at three out of nine forts across the regions. With Shrouded Spoils, all of them became active. This included Lost Gold and Old Boot Fort in the Ancient Isles, Sailor's Knot and Hidden Spring Keep, and Kraken Watchtower and Skull Keep. Sea of Thieves had a bit of a break in the run up to the next major content update. Rare had Christmas off and were preparing to launch their biggest update ever, the Anniversary Update. Before that, in February 2019, there was a small addition to the Devil's Roar, Molten Sands Fortress, 
the first and only four in the Devil's Roar. We wouldn't see a map change until the 20th of March 2019, where an uncharted island at K11 began to have areas of construction appear at it. This was around one month before the launch of Anniversary, and that definitely brought in some huge changes. On the 29th of April 2019, after a painful wait, the Anniversary update dropped, Sea of Thieves' fifth major content update. It added a whole host of features, but evolved the map as well. Sticking with the K11 island, it had finished construction, being turned into the glorious Sea Dogs Tavern. The tavern was meant to be the physical location of the tavern for the arena mode. Unfortunately, you could not access the interior outside of the separate game mode. The sea posts saw new NPCs arrive too, representatives of the new fishing faction, the Hunter's Call. One was a familiar face, Merrick from the Hungering Deep, who brought his family along too. The most interesting change appeared in the form of a brand new island, the Shores of Gold. The Shores of Gold was the island reached at the end of the campaign. It's located in the most northeastern corner of the map and is the largest island to date. It features several landmarks, vaults and a dungeon below it. The tall tales required some other small changes. Many islands received these altars used to summon Grey Marrow, one of the bosses. These new platforms appeared on Discovery Ridge and Plunder Valley, along with new traps at Sailor's Bounty in the cave system for the Art of the Tricks to Tall Tale. Many of the large islands also got vaults which can be opened with keys, used for several of the tall tales. The island at N13 saw some small changes, with the nameplate and figurehead added to the magpie's wing. Anniversary lasted quite a while and the next update would launch in July, where Sea of Thieves began to release smaller updates, but monthly. On the 14th of August 2019, the second monthly update launched, Dark Relics, which saw a mysterious dig site appear at the southern island of I-12. This island was the home of Merrick's ship that was destroyed by the Megalodon. The dig site progressed further on the 11th of September 2019, when Smuggler's Fortune dropped. Stitcher Jim returned but placed himself on the north island of I-12. A new NPC also appeared at the dig site, a masked stranger that did not speak. The eyes of the portrait in the wreck at Shipwreck Bay began to glow, with a table of relics appearing too. The Sea Dog Tavern also received a new parkour course for players to practice their running and jumping. The very next month, a huge change was introduced with Fort of the Damned, releasing on the 16th of October. The old boot fort, located in the Ancient Isles, had been completely transformed. Using the Dark Relics, someone had brought in the Sea of the Damned, an alternate dimension into the Sea of Thieves. This twisted Old Boot Fort into the Fort of the Damned. A green mist clings to the fort until this day and makes it hard to see in and out of. A new world event activated by players accompanied these map changes. Seabound Soul launched in November and brought minimal map changes, only adding a chamber for Captain Flameheart's sarcophagus and is only used for the Seabound Soul Tall Tale. Festival of Giving, launching in December, introduced the new Maiden Voyage, a tutorial level with its own unique island, Old Sailor's Isle. This was not accessible in the main map though. It also added the next stage of I-12, with parts of shipwrecks being hoisted out of the sea, and Merrick's ship mast was used as a makeshift Christmas tree. Some of the trees had been chopped down as well. January's release was Legends of the Sea. This, once again, continued the development of I-12. A new NPC, Umbra, also arrived on Lagoon of Whispers, a small island in the southern shores of Plenty. She's a vendor of tattoos and a chronicler for the exploits of both players and lore characters. February saw Crews of Rage drop. The map changes were sparse, but the workshop on Wanderer's Refuge was expanded. The skull on the desk could now be turned, opening the back door. This led to a small room revealing the identity of the masked stranger to be none other than Wanda from Cursed Sails. More importantly, the cave further on revealed the figurehead of the most feared vessel to exist in the Sea of Thieves, the Burning Blade. Other markings and candles showed us this was a shrine to Captain Flameheart. March, you guessed it, expanded I-12 even further. The island showed a big leap forward, where the main area contained the stern of Merrick's ship now, with some towers and further decorations to make the island even more sinister. The main change came from two additional areas linked to the Heart of Fire tall tale, the sequel to Seabound Soul. One was on Liar's Backbone. Underneath was a cave, the home of Stitcher Jim, decorated with skeleton runes and iconography of Captain Flameheart. The bigger of the two was a new gauntlet under the Devil's Thirst. This is a multi-path dungeon filled with lava, traps, and enemies, and the climax of the tall tale takes place here. In April, we got Ships of Fortune, and it marked the final change to I-12, where the island had changed from an uncharted one to the Reaper's Hideout. Like the Fort of the Damned, a thick fog shrouds the island. The main building is complete, and a new NPC was there, the Servant of the Flame. He's the leader of a new faction called the Reaper's Bones. The stone excavation now has a trapdoor covering it, and skeleton runes adorning it. The main hall is covered in golden masks similar to the Servant of the Flames. In the completion of the island, an underwater stone arch had disappeared and was never seen again. 
Sea of Thieves would not have any map evolution for over a year. However, in June 2021, the Pirates of the Caribbean crossover, A Pirate's Life, would introduce brand new areas. There were two main areas on the map and two more not on the main map. One was the Siren Citadel, an underwater area used for the sunken Pearl Tall Tale. It housed two large structures made out of coral and the Black Pearl. Above water, far to the north and blighted by a permanent storm, was the Coral Fortress. The fortress was a large dungeon with several puzzles and combat sections, housing the Flying Dutchman. This was used for the Dark Brethren Tall Tale. The two others were only accessible via the new portals to the Sea of the Damned. The first was the Dead Man's Grotto and Sailor's Grave. The first area was a huge nod to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride opening, and the second was a small town in the Sea of the Damned, created by a character called the Cursed Captain. The other also takes inspiration from the ride and films, featuring several areas. One is the Whispering Bayou, the Domain of Calypso. One is the Fortress of Lost Souls, a Spanish fortress. Next is Isla Tesoro, a Spanish port town inspired by the ride. Finally, the Tavern of the Damned is a tavern in the Sea of the Damned, where Sea of Thieves characters tend to hang out after they die. Season 4, launching in September of the same year, also expanded the map. It was time to dive into the history of the Merfolk and Sirens. Added were six shrines puzzle and combat focused dungeons which players can explore. Along with those, Rare added three Siren Treasuries. They're combat based activities that essentially act as a skeleton fort, but underwater. All of these areas can be found deep below the waves. We would have to wait until February 2022 for the world to change again in Sea of Thieves. Rare announced a new approach to story content, Adventures which would increase the cadence in which the world evolved. The announcement also explained that players would affect the world with community-focused outcomes. February kicked us off with the first of these adventures. This one was called Shrouded Islands. Much like the Fort of the Damned and Reaper's Hideout, several more islands were enveloped in the thick fog. These islands were Shipwreck Bay, Devil's Ridge, Crescent Isle, Marauder's Arch, and Golden Sands Outpost. When the adventure finished after two weeks, all of the islands aside from Golden Sands returned to normal it was revealed that the events of Shrouded Islands had allowed six sea forts to come through from the Sea of the Damned. These were Spanish-styled forts manned by Spanish phantoms, under the control of Captain Flameheart. There were two forts for each region, aside from the Devil's Roar. The third adventure, the Shrouded Deep, came out on the 21st of April. It saw a small change of Merrick's new ship, the Killer Whale, become beached near the centre of the map. This was removed after three weeks, but the rocks still remained there. On the 26th of May, Rare released the first community-based adventure, where players got to decide the fate of Golden Sands. This event, lasting two weeks, gave players the option to save Golden Sands and dispel the fog that covered it, or leave it shrouded. Players would have to complete certain, repeatable tasks in order to score points for their side. This included delivering supplies in order to save it, or blowing up rowboats at the island to ruin it. The exact outcomes were not conveyed to the player base, but in the end, Golden Sands was saved, announced in a live stream on the 9th of June. Returning to Wanderer's Refuge for the third and final time, the fifth adventure, The Forsaken Hunter, dropped in July, and it saw even more changes to the workshop. The shrine to Captain Flameheart was desecrated and the figurehead was pulled off the wall. The 4th of August 2022 marked the launch of Season 7 and the long-requested Captaincy update. The main map change here was a new faction, called the Sovereigns. They set up a tent and lookout tower at each of the outposts and allowed ship owners to easily offload their loot. Players can dock rowboats and use the lifts and harpoons to make selling treasure a breeze. The 18th of August was the release of Adventure 6, The Hunter's Cry. In terms of map changes, the main map was left untouched, but players could venture to the Sea of the Damned once more. This time, it was a twisted version of the Sea Dog Tavern in a separate server with the objective of rescuing Merrick. I have to say, this man is involved in all the map changes, isn't he? He's not even the main character of the game. The 20th of October marked the start of changes to Golden Sands Outpost. Players saw stonework had began around the island, hinting toward it becoming a port town. On the 9th of November 2022, the 9th adventure of Return of the Damned released. This adventure was the second community choice. Players would have to decide if they were to save Captain Pendragon or resurrect Captain Flameheart, two prominent characters in the game. The decision was set up similarly to Lost Sands. As for the map changes, Bell and Pendragon appeared outside the wreck of the Black Witch on Shipwreck Bay, and Captain Flameheart's corpse was moved outside the Reaper's hideout. In the end, the community voted to resurrect Captain Flameheart, but changes to the world are yet to be felt. Coming towards the end now, two new areas were introduced as part of the Season 8 content update. 
This came out on the 22nd of November 2022. The expansions were to the Tavern of Legends and the Reaper's Hideout. The Tavern of Legends had an expanded seating area built into the cliffside and an extra office for the Pirate Lord. The Reaper's Hideout was improved with a cave system under the trap door, featuring a tavern, NPCs and a giant tree. Both areas are used as social spaces and as a way to receive curses, with bespoke cutscenes to boot. On the same day, New Golden Sands also received even more upgrades, with the stonework improving even further. To mark the final map change of 2022, and the most recent one, New Golden Sands progressed further on the 15th of December. The shops and tavern were completely overhauled to be made out of stone, with the tavern receiving an upstairs, balconies, a stage, and a terrace. And that covers all the map changes in Sea of Thieves and brings you up to speed with 2023. We already know that 2023 will bring so much more, so that's something to look forward to. What was your favourite change? Please let me know down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.